good day. I am Sister Karima Paris of the Thusia Seventh day Adventist Church, and I do welcome you to another of our Bible studies as we look into the origins of the secret rapture, a booklet done by Brother Nyron Medina of Thusia Seventh day Adventist Church. Let us bow for a word of prayer. Holy Father, which art in heaven, I bow before your throne of grace, asking you for your grace, asking you for your Holy Spirit to be in me through justification to help me to do your work in preaching this everlasting gospel, the fourth angel's message of exposing false religion so that people could come to know you as Yahweh, the Messiah. In Jesus' holy name I pray these things. Amen. Yes, my dear friends, today we want to look into the origins of the secret rapture because we have an evangelical Zionist, Pastor Greg Locke, he spoke of this along with others in their Bible prophecy concerning the church or the believers being raptured away during the period of a tribulation. And with their strong support, their strong devilish support for the war that is taking place on the Gaza Strip, along with the understanding of their false prophecy, end time prophecy, we could understand why they are in so full support of, as Greg Locke said, Palestine must be a parking lot and the Dome of the Rock, which is an Israeli shr Islamic shrine, must be blown up so that they could be zipped out of here and so that they can bring in the second coming of Jesus. This is what he said and we will look into it. And so I find it very interesting that as a people, the evangelicals, their false prophecy includes this doctrine of them being raptured away while there is war in Jerusalem or as they call it, the Great Tribulation upon Jerusalem, which a third of the Jews will perish and a third will be forced to accept Jesus Christ in the period called Armageddon. We will show you these things, but we want you to know that doctrine of a secret rapture or a secret coming, second coming of Christ, is not found in the Bible. It is absolutely a doctrine of demon or of demons. It is not from the scriptures. So this is what we want to look into, my dear brethren and friends. Let us go into our Bibles. Let us search the scriptures. And as we search the scriptures, we will discover that Jesus warned against a teaching about a secret coming the second time. Yes, Jesus did this. He warned against a teaching about a secret coming and the secret coming at the second time. So we want to look into Matthew. Let us consider Matthew chapter 24. And we are going to read verse 24 to 26. Matthew chapter 24, 24 to 26. And this is what we are told by Christ himself. He speaks and he says, For there shall arise false Christ and false prophets 
and shall shew great signs and wonders, insomuch that, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. So Jesus Christ is telling us here that there shall be false Christ and false prophet or prophets who will shew great signs and wonders. And we are told, if it is possible, they shall deceive the very elect. So we are warned about false Christ. We are warned about false prophets. Now let us see here what else he tells us. He says, Behold, I told you before. You see, so he's warning us. He's saying he told us before. What did he tell us before? In verse 6 we are told, Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. So the warning of Christ is where people say he has come secretly. He is in this place in the desert or he is in the secret chamber, thus showing a secret second coming of Christ. He says not to believe them. He warns us not to believe in a secret second coming. His first coming was not secret but was publicly announced by angels. So, as he warned concerning a secret second coming, the Bible does show us that when he came first, his first coming was announced. Let us consider it in the book of Luke chapter 2, and we are going to read from verse 6 to 18. Let us read from verse 6. We are told here. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. So Mary and Joseph were in Bethlehem and the time came for her to be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. We are told, and there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of Yahweh came unto them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were so afraid. So here we have the angel visiting the shepherds. And we are told that the glory of Yahweh shone round about them. What else we are told here in verse 10? And the angel said, so the angel brought a message to them. They, uh, he announced something, we are told. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for... Behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. So here we have the announcement by the angel of Christ's first coming upon the earth. The angel told the shepherds of the miraculous birth of Jesus Christ that he was actually delivered in the city of David and we are told here and suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising and praising God and singing so watch our rejoicing in heaven the whole of heaven is rejoicing at the announcement that Jesus Christ was born. We are told here. And verse 13 again. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace 
good will towards men that was great news right great news and we are told in verse 15 and it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into heaven the shepherds said one to another let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which is come to pass which Yahweh had made known unto us. You see that? So Yahweh has made known unto them of the birth of the Messiah, of the birth of Christ. And so they made haste, we are told, they made haste and they went and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger so that scene is one way you had an angel coming to announce the birth of christ his first coming and multitudes of angels singing and praising god because we have the savior who was born and so the first coming of christ was not secret it was announced and we are told in the scriptures that his second coming when he comes the second time that all eyes shall see him let us look at revelation chapter 1 and verse 7 revelation 1 7 and we are told behold he cometh with clouds and every eye shall see him and they also which pierced him and all kindreds of the earth shall wail before him even so amen so here we are told clearly that every eye shall see christ when he comes but lo and behold the evangelicals they preach a secret coming of jesus christ where he comes to actually cause the church to be vanished away or cause the church to be wrapped away raptured away at the second coming so when he comes the second time it is for the sole purpose of rapturing away the church and it will be secret what you we want you to do is to consider this clip from a documentary called till kingdom come where a pastor Ben Ham the third is speaking and in his speech he is explaining their prophecy their Bible prophecy concerning the last days you will observe that he talks about how there would be great tribulation there would be great tribulation he first showed that the church he first showed that that Israel is where Jesus will return and that there will be great tribulation but first Israel must be re-established so as they look upon the Israel today the Israeli today with that piece of land they see it as the re-establishment of Israel on the land that they claim is God's land and that they claim that God has given to them forever we are, have already shown you in our previous videos we had a series concerning whose land it is and we have already showed you that they have been disinherited from the land because they rejected the spiritual covenant of Yahweh and they went away serving Baal they went away serving Ashtoreth. They went away serving different gods. And after they went into captivity, in the time after Christ under the Roman Empire, they actually murdered Christ. They murdered Christ. And so the little time of probation they had afterwards, they murdered Stephen. So these people are not the people of God. 
Christ has already told them that their house is left unto them desolate, and Christ has already shown them that Jerusalem would be trodden underfoot until the time of the Gentiles, which we explain to be at the second coming of Christ. All of that is found in the prophecy of Daniel chapter 2. We also understand from Paul that the curse of God is upon them to the uttermost in the book of Thessalonians. And so we know from scriptures and other scriptures we have quoted to prove to you that these people in Israel are not the people of God. And we invite you by God's grace to go and look at the, those uh, videos again on this very page, Karima Paris YouTube page. So we are seeing what we would see from the clip is that he speaks about the reestablishment of Israel where he spoke of great tribulation in Israel with war, with disasters, with disease. And he shows, yes, Jerusalem trodden on the foot till the time of the Gentile is fulfilled. And so we, we, we have shown you what that period is. And he said the Christians would be preserved. They would be raptured. The church, the church would be raptured away. And that is their wonderful hope. They also spoke of the time called Armageddon, which they misinterpret to be the battle of the last seven years, where a third of the Jews will perish and a third will be forced to be converted to Christ. This is all a part of their prophecy. But within their false prophecy concerning the end times, you have the doctrine of the rapturing, which we see is one of the main reasons one of the main reasons they accept the murdering of Palestinians by Israeli because they want the second coming as they view the second coming as the church being raptured away. This evil doctrine has led to the murder of thousands of Palestinians because they do not view them as human beings. One pastor, Pastor Abraham the fourth. Or Ben Ham, sorry, Ben Ham the fourth says there is nothing such as a Palestinian. And so these people are, are as if they are animals. That is what they call them. But all of this is because of their false or wrong misinterpretation of scriptures. And so that is why we want to look into this doctrine of the secret rapture and to tell you of the origin of it. Also, you would see Greg Locke, an evangelical Zionist, who calls for Palestinian land to be made into a parking lot. And who said that the Dome of the Rock, which is as an Islamic shrine, that it should be blown down? So that they could be raptured out of here. So that they could get the second coming of Christ. So they support the war in Gaza because of their satanic doctrine that has misled them to think that somehow or the other by supporting the massacre that is taking place that somehow Christ is coming for them. Somehow they would be raptured away. So take a look at this clip. You remember what I've shared with you about how Israel fits into end time prophecy? This is the most important geographical place on the face of the earth. This is where Jesus will return. The first sign was Israel being reestablished nationally. And then there's going to be great tribulation in Israel. They're going to have wars, natural disasters, disease, and Jerusalem will be trodden down until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. As Christians, we're going to be preserved. We're going up to be with him during that time. That's the rapture. As Christians, we're going to be preserved. 
we're going up to be with him during that time. That's the rapture. And that's the wonderful hope that we have. So now we're watching end time signs for the second coming of Christ. And then after that, there's going to be an end time battle that we studied and looked at previously this year. This is going to be the culmination, the battle of Armageddon. לפי הפרק האחרון בברית החדשה, ההתגלות, הקרב האחרון בהיסטוריה האנושית קרוי מלחמת ארמגדון. הקרב יחל מכאן, מהר מגידו, וביוונית ארמגדון. הקרב הזה יימשך שבע שנים, נהרות של דם ישטפו את הארץ, האדמה תרעד. ומה יהיה על היהודים? שני שלישים מהם ימותו, והשליש הניצול ייאלץ להמיר את דתו לנצרות. People are asking, how will it end? When will it end? Does the Bible give us any indication of what might be happening? Now, Jesus said, before he comes back again, there will be great distress. This is called the tribulation. God is watching every missile. When Israel is involved in major warfare, pay attention, because the eye of God is on Jerusalem every day. When you see these signs, lift up your heads and rejoice. Your redemption draws now. So what we saw is the connection between the tribulation and the secret rapture by these ministers. Israel should make the Gaza Strip a parking lot by this time next week. Destroy the whole thing. I know who will be all right, Israel, because God said no weapon formed against you is going to prosper. No nation is going to be able to stop what God's doing in Israel. Not China, not North Korea, not Hamas, not Iran, not Iraq, none of them. Russia, not a one of them. They're small potatoes in God's prophetic spectrum and timeline. So I, I hope Netanyahu's a leader and he just mows the whole thing down by this time next week. Amen. The Muslim religion hates Jewish people to the core of who they are. Now listen, here's what I think. I told my wife this last night. This would be the most controversial thing I say, but I'll be all right. I'll preach in a minute. Somebody, I hope, get this message to Benjamin Netanyahu. That he ought to take care of the rest of them yahoos. Now, I'm going to tell you what would fix it right now. By the way, he'd fix it, and it would help usher in what we're wanting so bad. Huh? While they're mowing down the Gaza Strip and letting them terrorists know exactly what we do with terrorists, which is not compromise or negotiate. What they ought to do is evacuate up there on the hill and get a great big missile and blow that wicked dome of the rock plumb off of the spot where it's standing right now so we can get that third temple rebuilt and usher in the coming of Jesus and blow that wicked dome of the rock plumb off of the spot where it's standing right now so we can get that third temple rebuilt and usher in the coming of Jesus Tear down that big demonic monstrosity that shouldn't even be there. Blow the whole thing to kingdom come. Rebuild that third temple and we'll zip up out of here in the glory land. Amen. Blow the whole thing to kingdom come. Rebuild that third temple and we'll zip up out of here in the glory land. Amen. This is what false doctrine do. It causes one to be brutish and selfish and devilish in their ways. No natural affections. Destruction and misery are in their ways, and this is what the evangelicals support, the massacre of human beings, wickedness. So these are some of the points. Points to note from the clip that gives us an understanding of the teachings behind the evangelical Zionist support for Israel's war crimes against the Palestinians and Arabs. Arabs. Israel re-established re as a nation. 
Great tribulation in Jerusalem, war, natural disasters, and diseases. Christians will be preserved. They will be raptured away. The end time battle of Armageddon, seven years of seven years of war, a third of the Jews will perish and a third will be forced to accept Christ. This is their heresy. This is the heresy that they believe. This is the false doctrine, the satanic doctrine that they believe that causes them to support the murdering of Palestinians. This is so devilish. This is so evil. But where did you think that doctrine came from? It is actually a devilish doctrine. The very origin of the evangelical church is founded in spiritualism. But we will come to see these things. What we want to consider is that the evangelicals, while Christ shows that his second coming, at his second coming, all I shall see him. Yet we are told of a rapture or a secret second coming by the evangelicals. Let us look into this. Let us see this by God's grace. We are going to consider a book. Lindsay Hall vanished into thin air. This is what we're told here. It means something that cannot be divided. In other words, the rapture will occur so quickly and suddenly that the time frame in which it occurs cannot be humanly divided. Just think of it. In the flash of a second, every living believer on earth will be gone. Suddenly, without warning, only unbelievers will be populating the planet. So they are saying in their false doctrine that only believers will be raptured away in the flash of a second and non-believers or unbelievers will be there to populate the earth. But notice he shows that a rapture will occur and this rapture happens in like a split second. This did say is the second coming of Christ. Look at this other quotation here. This other quotation here is taken from Malkush Dictionary of Premillennial Theology. And this is what we are told. The coming of Christ to rapture away the church saints was an entirely different event than was his coming to judge sinners and to rule and reign for a thousand years. Many great Bible teachers of the period saw that both events were to be taken as distinct literal comings, plural, distinct literal comings, and could not simply be spiritualized away. End of quote. So Malkush, in his dictionary of pre-millennial theology, shows us what the evangelicals mean when they speak of a secret rapture or when they speak of the church being raptured away, they are actually teaching that there will be two second coming of Christ. One for the church to rapture away the church and the other one is where Christ will come to judge the earth. The Bible does not teach 
of two second comings of Christ. It does not show that there are two events of the second coming of Christ where one will deal with the saints and the other he will be dealing with the sinners by his judgment upon sinners. So the very concept of talking about a secret rapture by the evangelicals is not grounded in the scriptures. It is not a biblical doctrine. It is a doctrine of devils. Remember Christ shows that it is false prophets shall arise. And he shows that when they say these things unto you, that there's a second secret coming of Christ of himself, he says, believe them not. So we are encouraging you not to believe the heresy, the evangelical Zionist sect, with their secret rapture doctrine. You cannot be saved believing a lie. No lie is of the truth. There's no hope in accepting a lie. This is not the glorious hope. And this is what we want you to understand. That you cannot call this the glorious hope when it is a lie. You will not be raptured away. There's no secret second coming of Christ. Christ himself shows that he warned about people saying that there is a secret coming of Christ and he calls them false prophets. And so we likewise, Enthusiast Seventh-day Adventist Church, we take the time to warn you so that you can know the truth. So that you could escape for your life from these false doctrine and accept the true real Christ. The real Christ does not come two times. He does not come secretly to rapture the church and then another time to pour judgment upon the wicked. We beg of you to take heed to these things. Let us consider some more. Let us see what we understand about what they're saying concerning a secret rapture we are told that the rapture happens so quickly so suddenly that humans will not know imagine a secret rapture where all the christians we are told vanishes away in less than a second. Who would be a doctor operating on a person and who wouldn't be driving a, a plane, piloting a plane or driving a bus or in their car or doing something? This will cause chaos. So much different accidents. You mean God don't care? That he will vanish away people and cause the earth to be in chaos? God is not the author of confusion. This doctrine is not the truth. It is a lie. So we are told here, all Christians will vanish from the earth. The second coming of Christ to rapture the church is a different event to his coming to judge the world. There are two literal distinct second coming. This is what they teach us. And this is not grounded in the scriptures. And this is what we are going to see. So this is the way the rapture is presented. But it was first presented to the world as a secret coming. As a secret coming in which the world will not know. Only Christians. Dr. Samuel Trigills, in who lived in the period 1813 to 1875, in the 1800s, the most outstanding Plymouth 
brethren scholar said the following so we want to see what mr trigill's implement brethren scholar an outstanding scholar said in a statement in 1855 in an article christian annotator we want to see what he says and i want to advertise this book for you are evangelicals true born again christians by nyron medina you can get it on any amazon market to ensure you learn the truths concerning what is happening let us see what he has said to us let us see what he has said to us the true christian hope so he's talking about the true christian hope you see pastor binham said the glorious hope is the rapture but look at what mr T triggles mr triggles tell on us about the true christian hope he says the true christian hope is the final advent and not some secret advent or secret rapture to the lord as judeas suppose might be the case you see that so he says the true christian hope is not one of a second coming that is secret it is not a secret advent it is not a secret rapture and this is quoted in tim warner history of pre trib development page five let us see what else he said mr triggles he said i am not aware that there was any definite teaching that there would be a secret rapture of the church at a secret coming until this was given forth as an utterance in mr irvin's church from what was there received as being the voice of the spirit but whether anyone ever asserted such a thing or not it was from the supposed revelation that the modern doctrine and modern phraseology respecting is aroused it came not from holy scriptures but from that which false pretended to be the spirit of god but from that which falsely pretended to be the spirit of god end of quote sp triggers the hope of christ's second coming pages 34 to 37 so what we have here is mr triggers said that he didn't know about any secret coming any secret rapture until some utterance in mr irvin's church mr triggers who is an outstanding plimont brethren scholar said that this is not a doctrine from the holy scriptures that it is from a falsely pretended spirit of god therefore it is doctrine of devils that the evangelicals hold so much that has caused them to support the murdering of palestinians with the hope that somehow they would be raptured away when it is just doctrines of devils to deceive them it is not the doctrine of christ this is a deceived people with lies concerning who the jews are whose land it is and a secret rapture these people have devilish doctrines living devilish doctrines and therefore they could support devilish behavior 
which is murdering. That is what is going on here. And this is what we need you to understand. When you imbibe satanic doctrines, your conscience becomes destroyed because you wouldn't have the faith to reason things out properly. And then you would support great evils. And this is what has happened and is happening as a result of this evangelical Zionist sect in Christianity has imbibed doctrines of devils. What we want to consider is who is Edward Irving. We want to understand who is this Mr. Irving that Mr. Triggles spoke about in his book that showed the doctrine concerning the secret rapture came from Irving's church and that this doctrine is not from the Bible and that this doctrine is actually from demons spirits of devils remember the bible shows us in the last days some shall depart from the faith giving heed to satanic doctrines and doctrines of demons yes and that is what christ said he said those who will speak of a secret rapture a secret coming of christ are false prophets they have departed from the faith of jesus they are not of christ so let us understand who is mr irvin we are going to quote here to find out who is mr irvin edward irvin founder of the first bronzeville was in scotland in 1830 and this is in uh this is from blessed quietness journal by steve van natten let us see this this is what we are told here by steve van natten he says here In the Western world, Pentecostalism generally traces its root back to the teachings and experience of Edward Irving. You notice that, that they doesn't trace their root back to the Bible. They didn't discover any gospel. They didn't rediscover the gospel that was lost. We are told in the Western world, Pentecostalism generally traces its roots back to the teachings and experience of Edward Irving, a Presbyterian minister in Scotland in the early 1800s. After studying the book of Acts, he began to teach that what the early church experienced was to be normative for the church in his day he was excommunicated from the presbyterian church over his heretical christological doctrine on march 28 1830 a miss mary campbell began to speak in other tongues and claimed she was divinely healed the following year, on October 30th, 1831, her sister, Mrs. Cardale, also began to speak in tongues and to prophesy. But their tongues are not languages of different nations, of different ethnic groups. Their tongues is vain babbling that cannot be understood. And therefore, you see, it is demons working through Campbell and demons working through her sister Cardell. It is demons 
that inspire this movement. We will continue to read. We are told here, Edward Irving formed his own church called the Catholic Apostolic Church and he soon ordained its first 12 apostles on November 7th, 1832. He also expounded a de detailed, he also expounded a detailed teaching on the gifts of this Holy Spirit and gave the whole of his theology an imminency by his expectation of the imminent second coming of the Lord. He died shortly thereof, but the movement he started, which became known as Ivanites. So his people today are referred to as Ivanites. Those who believe in the doctrine of Edward Irving, who was influenced by Mary Campbell and her sister, who got their glossary from demons, he was influenced by them, formed a church, and through that church, we have the spreading of the doctrine of the secret rapture. A church whose foundation was based on spiritualism. Demons working in the experience of Campbell and Cardale, giving them speech that cannot be understood. Giving them speech that cannot be understood. It was demons working through them. So the evangelical sect was founded and has its roots in spiritualism. So likewise, the Zionists, their roots are in spiritualism, the Talmud and the Kabbalah, where they all give allegiance to the devils, to Satan. So let us understand about Edward Irving, a summary. He was a Presbyterian minister in Scotland in the 1800s. In 1830, a Miss Campbell and later her sister, Mrs. Cardale, began to speak in tongues and to prophesy. We also found out that in 1832, after being excommunicated, Mr. Irving formed his own church named the Catholic Apostolic Church. We understood as well that he ordained 12 apostles in his church and taught a detailed teaching on the gifts of the Spirit and the immediate second coming of Jesus Christ. He died shortly after, but his church continued and was known as Ivanites. This is what we are learning. This is the history of this movement. This is where the the, the doctrine of the secret rapture lies in spiritualism, not in the scriptures and not by the Holy Spirit of God. This is what we are learning. So my dear brethren, we will stay here for today, but we have seen some important things. We understand the heresy of a secret rapture. It is part of the evangelicals prophetic end time prophecy where they claim that the Christian church will be preserved in the time of the tribulation because they will be raptured away. We understand that their understanding of the secret rapture is that it happens quickly, suddenly, and no human will know and that all Christians will vanish from this earth. We understand that it is two separate comments because one has to do with the judgment, the final destruction of the wicked, and the other has to do with the rapturing of the church. So they have two second comments. We understood from Mr. Triggles that this concept is not biblical and that this concept is not this teaching, this experience is not from the Holy Spirit at all. 
Therefore, it is a doctrine of devils. It is founded and rooted in spiritualism, demons working upon the mind of Campbell and her sister, and who have influenced Irving so that he set up his own church and now they are called Irvingites. This heresy, this heresy is not the glorious hope of the church because this heresy is not found in the scriptures. This is what we want you to know. And we are warning you as Christ warned the church that when the false prophet come and say that his coming, his second coming is secret, his second coming is going to be a secret rapture. He said, believe them not. And this is what we are encouraging you to do. Because when you believe such heresy, you are believing doctrines of demons. And you cannot be saved in believing devilish doctrines. You cannot be saved in spiritualism. Jesus Christ is the only way. He is the truth. And his truth does not support a secret rapture. His truth does not support the murdering of Palestinians in the name of his prophetic knowledge, his prophetic faith. No, it doesn't. And so we call upon you to investigate with us these heresies so that you can give it up and that you could serve the true Christ with his true doctrine because Christ has warned. If one has not the doctrine of Christ, he is none of his. Let us end with that scripture. In 2 John and verse 9, this is what we are told. Christ himself, we are told here. Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. So you see, all those Christian Zionists who do not have the doctrine of Christ, they do not have God. He that abided in the doctrine of Christ, he had both the Father and the Son. So we are inviting you through the doctrine of Christ to get Christ, to get the truths of the character of Christ in you, and to give up the heresy, the satanic doctrine of a secret rapture. Remember, my dear brethren and friends, my YouTube viewers, you can get a copy of this book that we are advertising for you, Our Evangelicals True Born Again Christians, so that you will know the truth. Because it is only the truth of Christ that could make you free. Let us pray. Dear Gracious Father, thank you for helping me to do this study to expose the origin of the secret rapture. It is an evil, devilish doctrine that the evangelicals hold that caused them to support the murdering of the Palestinians. Father, we pray for Palestinians, we pray for Arabs, we pray for evangelicals, we pray for all that have not the doctrine of Christ, that have not God, because their doctrines are wrong, are satanic, that they will come to know the true Christ through his doctrines, that is the only hope they have to be saved, so that they will be drawn to you, their Father, we pray, in Jesus' holy name, amen.